everybody, and welcome to the We Help Business Podcast. Yes, we've made a podcast like everyone else, and like so many other business people, we're out there doing our podcast thing. Uh, hopefully, this one's a little bit different, maybe because it's shorter, maybe because we're trying to make it very concise. Uh, of course, I'm kind of breaking that rule now by rambling on, but it's the first episode. I think I get to take a little bit of liberty. Uh, I'm Drew Hall. I'm the creative director of We Help dot business or the guy who helped create we help dot business an idea that's been in my brain for far too long and very happy to bring it to light and share it with more people and see what we can do to potentially help your business so the purpose of this podcast will be just quick tips or ideas and other pieces of innovation that we've come across um, part of what our job is is not just to dictate how you should do things but also to lead from uh, design and so in our case, we listen to a lot of business podcasts, or at least I do. I, I like to consume a lot of information. So we listen to it. And so sometimes it might just be tidbits of info I took from those. I'll cite the source. Uh, it, it may just be um, things that we've come across, which is what today is. Uh, and it could be just general information, but the goal is to just help you. All right, there we go. I promise to keep that short. That's as short as I can get it. So let's jump into what our topic is. So so many small business owners and various owners I've come across, some of them aren't small, but most of them are small business owners. They come across the same thing and, and they're excited or they're paying someone to be excited to run Facebook ads. And I don't know if you know the history of Facebook ads, but I'm going to break it down for you really quick. Like um, with our parent company, Craft Show Digital, we ran Facebook ads very successfully and just blew it out of the water for a ton of clients. And it was great. It was really, really great because it was dirt cheap. We were talking about sub pennies. We're like 0.001 cents getting results. And at that point, the, the price for the advertising was so cheap, all it took was one little hit to flip it over. And now all of a sudden they're profitable. Well, that was then. This is now. And the now is the fact that Apple uh, with the iPhone changed that. And I want to explain that because you may have heard that, but I, I kind of wanted to put into detail maybe a little bit more about it so you could understand what it means when Apple changed uh, their data. So what happens now is iPhone natively blocks you from getting ads. You actually have to turn on ads, meaning if you want to see ads, you know, Facebook would love you for it. So would many advertisers, but you actually have to go into your iPhone and push your push a button and turn it on, right? Uh, so natively it's, it's off. And that happened with uh, iOS update 14 point something or another. Now, that doesn't affect Google, Google Android phones, and anything running the Android operating system. Yeah, you're going to get ads. Probably get more ads now, but you're going to get ads. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the ad base on Facebook is cut down dramatically. It also means that uh, tracking data, like when someone were to, let's say you have an ad and you put up an ad and someone clicks through that ad and then they go to a website. Well, if you've got a good marketing team or you yourself are that smart, it has a pixel installed on it. And that Facebook pixel tracks that person's movement. And then you can serve them more ads. So you can constantly reach out to this audience. Well, with that iOS update, that's gone. So what does that mean? Well, it still tracks Google, still tracks Android folks. But what it means is, is that, that the Facebook algorithm, right? So this massive algorithm that's almost like a living, breathing thing, this algorithm is no longer being fed as much. So if you think of it like, maybe like a plant, to some extent, if you feed the plant, it continues to grow. If you starve the plant, it will die. If you feed it just enough to keep it alive, then it doesn't grow and it doesn't die. It just sits stagnant. And essentially that's what's happened with Facebook ads is that for the most part, unless you understand the formula, Facebook ads have just become stagnant. So you're throwing money into them and they're not necessarily going anywhere. And I've done a ton of research to dig this up because it is my job to make sure that I'm optimizing the best possible way for my clients. And so what we found is we have a process in which we go through in order to help uncover where that audience is, because the algorithm is not giving, being fed enough information to form that audience. So again, back to the plant analogy, no food, it dies. A lot of food, it thrives. Kind of some food, it does okay. And so that's kind of where we're at with Facebook ads. They're just going to perform okay. Money, dollar for dollar, if, if you ask my advice, which I do get asked a lot, uh, my money would be on Google ads. I would do AdWords. I would do YouTube ads. I would do Google local ads, which are incredibly powerful, especially if you're a small business that has a place, if you're a restaurant or a coffee shop 
or a service provider, those are great and you need clients to come to you. Um, big deal, especially in a, in a local area. So anyway, long story short of it, Facebook ads, they're currently not optimized to benefit you. They are optimized for Facebook to survive. And I'm standing behind that until it changes. And so right now we know that's not going to change. So here's what I would suggest you do is consider a couple things. One, if you're going to run Facebook ads or your marketer is going to run Facebook ads, make sure that they're running ads that are brand recognition, their brand reach, uh, engagement ads is what we would call them. I believe that's even a selection in there, but you want to run an engagement ad. And that is to say, now the brand is your messaging is people on Facebook who may have liked your brand before, may not have, but the idea at least is you're building an audience with engagement because they're clicking like they're, they're clicking, um, comments. It's, it's asking them to engage with your ad and not just be served an ad and go away. So there's a chance that you can build an audience from that. And that's one way to approach it is through engagement ads. Secondly, I wouldn't touch Facebook ads right now, unless you really know that you have a great audience on Google uh, or Android platform. Um, great. Go after it. I wouldn't put as much money into them. So what I would then do is take that same amount you would put in Facebook ads and I'd roll it over to either AdWords. If you're not dealing with AdWords or it's too confusing, find someone who can help you with that or Google my business. Um, which is a fantastic, or Google local is a fantastic way of, of, of reaching an audience. And I would look at those two avenues. And really, if you're going to come down to it, if you're really concerned with the hyper local market, again, don't spend the money on Facebook, find cost effective solutions that work. So what I would do is take that money and figure out if I could create sort of buzzword ideas. So anything you could do to generate people talking about your business, and that could be from giveaways, if you can afford it. So if you're going to put, if you're really hard set on, I was going to put $500 a month into Facebook ads, well, take that $500 and figure out how you can give away $500 a free product or a $500 discount or multiple discounts, but some way of getting people to come in and then use tools like Google My Business, which is free. Use your Facebook social media to post. Hey, we're giving away $500. All you have to do is just show up in blah, blah, blah. And don't forget to collect email addresses or any other kind of data that you can when those people do show up so you can actually track your ROI and yada, yada, yada. We're here to help you with that if you need it. Of course, this is a business podcast. It'd be an idiot not to do it. And you can find us at wehelp.business. That's wehelp.business. Now, it's literally like .com, which is subbed in .business. So we help .business. We have packages. We're there to talk to you. We work you through it. It's all inclusive and we can make things happen. However, there are lots of great marketers out there for you to reach out to. Of course, we'd love you to come hang out with us, but you know, there's other folks. So that's about it for this first episode. If there's anything else you need, don't forget to reach out to us. We're right here. It's very easy. We help .business. Just go to the website and check out what we have to offer, check out testimonial samples, blah, blah, blah. It's all there for you. We just want to make sure that you know we're here to help. And I guess that'll do it. No more rambling, right? Because we're keeping these fast. So under nine minutes, under nine minutes, as long as I don't keep talking for another 30. No, you're cutting me off? Okay. <laughs>